The AMG GT first debuted in 2015. Now it's time for Mercedes to give the car a facelift. Today we're going to spend time with two variants in the GT lineup. The GTC, which is the car you see next to me, and then the harder, more track-focused GTR. We're going to compare and contrast the two vehicles, and we're also going to figure out which one's the better buy. Let's check them out. So we're starting off in the GTC, but before we focus in on that car in particular, let's take care of the housekeeping items. The headlights and taillights have been redesigned ever so slightly and there's a new rear diffuser. You wouldn't really be able to tell that it's a different car from the pre-facelift model until you get inside, and that's where all the big changes have taken place. Let's start with the most important stuff. Right in front of me right now as I'm driving along is a brand new 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. It's the first time the GT is getting that. And next to that is a 10.2 inch widescreen display. Both are welcome pieces of technology to this car that was definitely starting to feel its age a little bit. And then what I'm holding on to right here, it's the new AMG steering wheel uh, with a lot of the features that you'll find on the GT four door. On the right hand side, you get a drive mode selector that you just twist from left to right. You can toggle between comfort, sport, sport plus, etc. You can switch between manual and automatic. You can take care of the exhaust. You can make the wing go up and down in the back. You can toggle with the suspension settings. It's all highly configurable. And I like that it's right in front of the driver as well. It's worth noting that those changes come across the GT lineup, they're not just for the GTC. So the GTC, how does it fit in the lineup? Let's start with the price, $150,900. It's $12,000 shy of the GTR and it's $35,000 more expensive than the base GT. Now, according to AMG, this is supposed to be the Autobahn bomber of the crowd. This is the car that's a little more subtle than that GTR with all of its crazy styling tweaks, uh, but still has high horsepower. It can still get you going plenty fast. Immediately, the first thing that jumps out at you is that twin turbocharged four liter V8. It's the same engine you get across the entire GT range. It's just different states of tune as you go along with each car. It's that classic AMG soundtrack that you want out of a V8. It's low and it's not shouty, but it gets angry as you provoke it a bit. The transmission that you're working with is a seven speed dual clutch unit, which now is actually getting along in age. Uh, you have the, the newer nine speed units from AMG, which are a bit smoother, I have to say. This thing is no slouch, it's plenty quick on the downshift and it works well with the V8, but it's certainly missing just a bit of that edge that you get with those newer nine speed units. So what's so different between the C bumping up to the R? Well, let's start with power. 577 horsepower in the GTR, which is up over 550 in the GTC, and 516 pound-feet of torque over 502. Zero to 60 time, 3.5 seconds instead of 3.6, and top speed is 198 miles per hour instead of 196 miles per hour in the GTC. So it's kind of like the GTR is like, eh, just that much better than you would every day. That said, what does it feel like driving the two back to back? The immediate difference is actually before you even get into the car, just look at how insane the GTR is styled when compared to the C. And it's supposed to be that way. There's a fixed rear wing on the back. These wheels are specific to the GTR. Uh, you can get a crazy color in the other trim as well. This one just happens to be solar beam yellow, which is a ridiculous color. And if you ask me, a little overdone, but I kind of like the restrained subtlety of the GTC. We're driving this thing, you can hear it, so let's talk about how it drives. I have it in the loud mode, which I assume you can hear right now, and that's the way to do it. Jeez. Oh my goodness. The biggest difference that you'll notice between the C and the R is the traction control system. This one is inspired by the GT3 race car. It's a nine stage traction control system. It's this little knob that sits right below the air conditioning vent. And once you turn the traction control off, you get to control this knob and decide how off you want it. Fully off completely or medium off, only sorta of, kinda off. It's up to you. And the only time you're ever gonna notice that is when you're on a track, which is what you're supposed to do with the GTR. That's the obvious thing. We knew that coming into this video, that if you take the car to the track, the GTR is the way to go. If you want more of an Autobahn cruiser, it's the GTC. The question that I had and wanted to answer is, is the R unusable on public roads? The answer to that is unequivocally no. 
In fact, it's really just as comfortable or uncomfortable, depending on how you look at it, as the GTC. It's the same three-stage suspension. It's the same AMG performance seats. So the things that made the GTC a little uncomfortable are also present on the R. There's nothing else that sets them apart so drastically where this one becomes super unusable on the road. Do you want your GT to be loud and in your face with a big ass wing glued to the back, loud colors and everything else? Then yeah, you're gonna wanna go for the GTR. If you're the type that wants things a little more restrained, then you go with the GTC. But because the two behave so similarly on the road and they're both that good, $12,000 separating the two, I'm going GTR. How could you not? 